Good evening, Right Side Nation. It's Mike Hanley here with Right Side News again. Uh, just starting out with the second video. It is about 11 p.m. Uh, May 25th of 2018. And uh, there's a few things that I want to go ahead and touch on today. Uh, some of the things, uh, or the most important things that we're going to talk about today is immigration. Uh, Donald Trump had a, a roundtable discussion regard, in regards to immigration, illegal immigration, and specifically targeting MS-13 uh, on, on Long Island, an area near where he grew up. It's actually an area where my mother grew up, and uh, apparently a lot, a lot has changed uh, over the years in, in uh, Long Island. But uh, before I get to all of that, uh, there's a few things in terms of what we covered yesterday. First, I'd like to go ahead and uh, fact check a few things um, that I had put together. Well, I said that Clap Clapper was a former director of the FBI. James Clapper was the former director of national intelligence. And then also uh, I talked about Jamil. It's Jamil Shaw is his last name, Mr. Shaw. Um, so I just wanted to go ahead and make those corrections. Uh, apologies for getting that mixed up. Basically what I do is I'm just going to go ahead and put these videos together, get them out, and then if there's any um, fact checking that needs to be done, I'll make sure I do that on the very next video to begin. So if there's any confusion on something that I've said, uh, I'm upfront, I'm honest about it, and I just want to make sure that I'm getting uh, the correct information to you. Uh, if there's any major... Um, any any major miscommunications or um, any mishaps in terms of the information that I'm putting out, um, just please let me know ASAP because I'm here to uh, put out um, high quality content and information that is important to uh, all the viewers and Americans alike. So I just thank you for the opportunity for uh, tuning in today, and um, I just want to go ahead and get started on. Um, some of the things that went on. Uh, Donald Trump was questioned on the White House lawn before he made the trip from Washington, D.C. Uh, out to Long Island. And uh, the first question was in regards to Spygate. Um, some people are calling it Obamagate. I mean, call it what you want. But um, the idea that a mole or a spy, which we covered yesterday, was put uh, into his campaign. And um, there's, there's a lot of questions there. And, and they think that um, something, some, someone was put into the campaign. I think we're figuring that out now, but uh, we can get, that, uh, get to that at a later time. Um, uh, Clapper is quoted or essentially admitted that um, there was a Trump on the campaign and Donald Trump should be happy that there was a mole or a spy on his presidential campaign. Um, I don't know why Donald Trump would be happy about that because that's completely against the law. So um, it behooves me, uh, you know, to say, oh, great, just makes essentially no sense whatsoever. Uh, and then Trump also fielded another question in regards to James Comey. And Trump's quoted as saying he has a lot of problems, a lot of problems. He said that a couple times, uh, also talking about all of the lies. Uh, if, if some of you remember, Comey recently went on to Capitol Hill in testimony in regards to the investigation um, and some of the things that went on within the FBI, and he has... Um, essentially lied under oath uh, to, um, you know, the people that were, asked, that were asking him questions. And obviously you can't lie under oath. That's a big no-no. So, um, you know, I just kind of wanted to touch on those things, the Clapper and the Comey, because I went over a little bit of that yesterday. Uh, also, uh, Trump was speaking about uh, renegotiating NAFTA. Um, essentially saying that both uh, Canada and Mexico have been spoiled and, you know, let's just say they aren't really happy with the proposal that Trump is putting forth. 
Um, they've been spoiled over the years, getting the better of the NAFTA agreement. For those who don't know, NAFTA is the North America Free Trade Agreement. Um, it's currently being restructured by Donald Trump. And um, essentially going to work something out that's a little bit more, a little bit more fair, a little bit more fair for Americans. That's the whole idea, um, especially the automobile workers. Trump specifically mentioned that the automobile workers in this country are going to be very happy with this deal. So I kind of wanted to just start it off with that um, and then go into this uh, roundtable discussion that was on Long Island, New, New York. Essentially, the theme is protecting our communi communities and securing our border. Um, as we all know, we have some of the weakest and worst immigration laws in the world. So being that our uh, immigration laws are some of the weakest in the world, um, the main focus was what is going on with MS-13 throughout our country, specifically in the Long Island area. Um, MS-13 originated out of El Salvador, and their slogan is kill, rape, and control. I mean, this is, this is insane. Just the idea that that's their slogan, and they're that prominent here in the United States. Um, most of this happens through illegal immigration. Um, <clears throat> the other day, Trump made a comment that the members of MS-13 are animals. And there was a lot of backlash in the media in regards to the comment that he made, saying that the members of MS-13 are, in fact, animals. And, um, you know, the idea that these people are are anything more than that are are crazy. You know, in, in this roundtable discussion, there was a, a gentleman who made the distinction um, saying that animals, they hunt and they eat their prey to survive. I mean, these people aren't even doing that. They're surviving just fine, but they're not, and they're not even hunting and eating their prey. They're essentially just murderers. And, and that's the sad thing about it. In this country right now, we have um, FFN, which stands for Fake Effing News, a.k.a. CNN, sitting up here and trying to defend MS-13 gang members. I mean, this is – the idea behind this is, is just – it's absolutely crazy to me. Um, there was a few numbers that were put forth – by some of the members that were on this roundtable discussion. Um, since 2017, ICE has doubled the number of arrests. They've, um, they've arrested 896 MS-13 members, and they've arrested a total of 4,800 gang members nationwide. Since 2016, they've arrested a total of 11,000 gang members. So that just right there shows, number one, they're doing a good job, but number two, how out of hand this problem truly is. Um, just in New York alone, they arrested 300 MS-13 members, and this is a really important part. This is a very important part. More than 40% of those 300 MS-13 gang members that were arrested were an unaccompanied minor. So they have no parents, they have no support system, and this all ties together. This goes back into what I was saying last night. The whole idea that when people come to this country, we want them to come here legally, and in order to do so, they can assimilate to our countries, to our country, to the United States of America, and to our laws, and understand what it means to be in America. To have that American dream. But when you have these people that are coming in who are unaccompanied, they, ha they don't have that support system. I mean, God only knows, if I didn't have my parents and the, su the support system that I have around me, I couldn't, I couldn't hardly go anywhere in life. 
And that's what's so important, not just to me, but especially to immigrants who are coming from a country that they know as home to coming here to a completely foreign country. I mean, they might see it on TV because of Hollywood, but let's be real. Hollywood's not real life. We all know that. And don't get me even started on Peter Wood. I mean, that's a whole different story. We don't need to go there right now. So basically the whole idea is that we want people to come here and we want people to come here legally and have that support system, especially minors. Like I talked about, they're coming to a whole new country. I mean, I couldn't imagine going to a whole nother country and not having a support system. And um, a lot of this was touched upon by uh, the DHS, the director of the DHS, and we'll get to her in a little bit. Um, just in regards to some of the things that are happening when people are trying to immigrate to this country and some of the loopholes that we have. And um, we've let it go on for far too long. So it is being addressed, which is, which is really essential to, to fixing the problem that we have uh, with poor immigration or uh, with illegal immigration and uh, poor laws. So, um, we also have our, our ICE and other federal agencies working with the El Salvadorian government to arrest known gang members that are in El Salvador before they potentially come here to the United States. So we're working in conjunction with foreign governments to not only make our country safer, safer to also prevent any illegal gang members from entering our country, but also helping them clean up their country and to identify these gang members um, where, for instance, the country of El Salvador does not have the necessary resources to make adjustments. Um, interestingly enough, Mr. Rod Rosenstein was there, who is number two currently at, at the FBI in his in charge, essentially, of the Russian, uh, Russia collusion investigation um, at the FBI. Because as many of us know, Jeff Sessions recused himself on any issues in regards to the, the Russia gate, the Russia collusion narrative that the Democrats have put forth, which has bared no crimes and hardly any credible or valuable information. Uh, so I'm gonna talk specifically about 2017. There were six kids murdered in Long Island. Two of them, one was shot in the face, one was shot in the back of the head, and then there was four that were violently and maliciously murdered, and they were murdered with machetes. I mean, could you imagine this going on in your backyard? I mean, no wonder people don't want to go out and get to know their neighbor. We have these animals roaming the streets. I mean, these these kids are either 18, I think under under the age of 18 years old. A couple of them being 15. I mean, it's just it's some of the saddest things that you could you could even imagine. Um, one, one thing Trump did do is he interrupted the round table and he was, he was talking specifically about aid reduction. So he was saying that for every illegal immigrant that enters into our country, Trump is going to reduce the large sums of money that we give to those countries. So basically it's saying up front to these countries, do not let these people out of your country to come directly here. If they are coming here, in fact, illegally, they must have the correct documentation and papers to either come here on a visa for a temporary stay or immigration papers so that they can come here legally and create a life full of happiness and liberty. Um, the, we had, uh, Christian Nielsen, who is the 
head of the Department of Homeland Secur Security, I didn't know this, but is the largest federal agency in the United States of America. She started off by saying that they're doing these things. They're building the wall. They're increasing technology. They've, um, Trump has sent the National Guard to the border, and it has actually um, increased the number of arrests. So there's been 3,000 arrests at the border since the uh, National Guard has been sent down to the Mexican border, Mexican-U.S. border. Um, I was extremely impressed with what she had to say. I mean, Christian Nielsen, she's on top of her game. She is very articulate. She's sincere. And um, she was talking a little bit about the MS-13 gang members coming to this country. And or just immigrants in general. But they typically, when they get here illegally, they're smuggled here. And so these people are either tricked or it's set up where they have to repay. They have a debt to the gang since the gang smuggled them. So they have to repay the gang through service to the gang. Now, whether or not they know this up front, I don't know. I don't know exactly how this deal works, but the whole idea is if the gang gets you here, you got to pay them back in one way or another. Um, also, a lot of these these kids are recruited from a young age to serve in these gangs because they don't have a household. They talk a lot about sponsors. So somebody can sponsor an immigrant who's coming in from another country. So potentially, if I was a gang member, I could act as a sponsor to bring someone in to the country legally through immigration. Uh, the problem with that is, is there's, it's very difficult to vet the sponsors of these potential immigrants when they come to the country. I mean, the whole idea is that if I'm sponsoring someone and I'm a good person, that I'm bringing somebody in that is also a good person and that I can show them and guide them and let help them get to know the area and how the country works. Um, so uh, another thing that uh, Nielsen commented on is that there's no way for the Department of Homeland Security to prevent gang members from coming into the country, known gang members. So if even if they are trying to immigrate here legally or they're just trying to come here on a visa, there's no way for the Department of Homeland Security to prevent them from coming in to the country because there's no law that says you're a gang member in El Salvador or wherever you are, you cannot come to our country. We have no law that states that. I mean, I was it was a while back, and I was looking, about, looking at the immigration laws for Mexico, just because they're south of our border, just countries that are close to us, and, and we have relationship, relationships with. If you go to Mexico illegally and you try to stay there, it's up to 10-year prison sentence for trying to immigrate to Mexico legally. I mean, could you imagine if we had that tough of a law? Nobody would come here. At least I don't think they would. I mean, it's absolutely insane. Um, there's arrests are up 40, 42% in regards to uh, illegal immigration with Department of Homeland Security. And there's a 315% increase in fraud arrests. So it's the idea where these people are acting as though they're family members or perhaps they're older than the age of 18 and they're acting as though they're less than 18 years old. So they're trying to come in as a family and that is essentially fraud through the immigration system. And these are things that we're starting to catch um, as Nielsen and others continue to do such a great job. Um, we had a, another a representative, I believe, I don't, I'm not exactly sure his name to be completely honest with you but he was talking about identifying a threat and in order, or identifying a um, threat. And in order to defeat a threat, you have to identify it first. 
and we have to end this whole idea of catch and release. Um, we really need to secure the border. Is something that he was saying, and he's spe specifically talking about number one, drug trafficking, but number two, sex trafficking, which is the. I don't know. I think human trafficking is a better term. I mean, they're trafficking people across the southern border into Southern California and throughout our country. And these people, I mean, they have no way to defend themselves. They're coming into our country. They're forced into sex slavery. And that's their life. I mean, so don't we as Americans and don't we as the United States of America owe this at least to 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 humans across the world to prevent those type of things from happening and one way of doing that is securing the border one by building the wall and then also using technology so we can maybe track certain people or track certain movements of people near and around the border. Um, that's definitely something that I think is a no-brainer and absolutely, I mean, imperative. So um, I talked to you guys about the sponsors of immigrants. I mean, they're not proper guardians. When we have sponsors, we want sponsors of immigrants are people who are upstanding individuals who are following the laws and are doing everything they can to live a happy life and reach the American dream, which is so many of us have now because the people that came before me and perhaps came before you laid that foundation. And we and and now that we have what we have, we have these, you know, nice lives because people that came before us immigrated here and it's not always easy for the first generation not always easy for the second but i believe as time goes on things get better um there's another thing that was talked about uh the parents of the victims and um we had robert niggins and elizabeth alvarado um and they lost their daughter to a murder by a ms-13 uh, gang member and a lot of times in order to become part of the gang gang excuse me you have to commit a crime and so a lot of these youngsters in order to become part of the gang they murder someone in order to get in so apparently there was some type of verbal altercation at school between this young lady and a member of the ms-13 gang after school, she went home. They ended up killing her. And uh, Mr. Mickens brought something to my attention, which I really appreciated. He talked about the condition that these youngsters that are in these gangs or potentially being recruited into these gangs, are they alone? Are they scared? Are they pressured? And this goes back, back to coming here legally with a family or having a sponsor maybe an aunt or an uncle who are doing the right things, following the laws, and they have somebody to look to as a proper example. If they don't have those things at home and they're just in school, maybe they don't have, they're, they're not going to class, maybe they are, maybe they have nobody overseeing their life at home. And so they're looking in other places. And if they're looking in terms of fellowship to gangs, Let's be real, that's, that's never going to end well. So I think we have to look not at these individual cases so much of, oh, we can't let this one person in here, but we need to look at the bigger picture of who we're, who we're bringing here, why they're coming here, and the foundation that they're going to have in order to be successful. And really the bigger picture is taking care, first and foremost, of American citizens, United States citizens before we allow someone into our country that we're not sure what the outcome is going to be is that what are their intentions do we know how difficult of questions are we asking them in terms of um the Im the immigration questions 
about what their intentions are when they come to this country. And I think we have to do a better job of vetting these type of people. I mean, why not just get the very best people to come here to our country, to help our country? Smart, knowledgeable, hardworking people. Hardworking might be the most important. The most important quality of almost any human being. I mean, other than being a good person, but as a citizen, you want to provide goods and services to provide for yourself and your family. Um, Miss Alvarado, she talked, she was talking about her daughter. She said she was, she acted like she was 30. She already knew what, what she wanted to do. Um, and she really had talked about this experience and what I was so impressed with Mr. Mickens and Mrs. Alvarado was how they're trying to turn their negative situation with the murder of their daughter by an MS-13 gang member into a positive. And Ms. Alvarado talked about how many remarkable people that she, that she has met throughout this process, whether that be the people with ICE, the law enforcement. She said she's met the president. She said, who would have ever thought I would have met the president? Well, sure enough, unfortunately, but sure enough, because of the murder of her daughter, she has had the opportunity to meet the President of the United States, and she is making the best of an absolutely devastating situation. And I think that is perhaps um, one of the most honorable things that one can do with their life. You know, she's dealt this deck of cards, but what she's doing with that deck of cards is uh, can change so many other people's lives. And, and the reason she said she was doing it was because that's because her daughter w was with her. And that's what her daughter would want. Um, there was also another uh, couple parents up here or up there at the roundtable discussion. And it was Evelyn Rodriguez um, who was talking about what I took away is that she was talking about how the school districts are not capable of handling the issues at school. And she says that she was trying to work with the administration at the school for several years, but she was being lied to. Well, it turns out down the road that her daughter ended up being being murdered by MS-13 gang, gang members. And no, at no time during during these two years where she was trying to get in with the school district, did they notify the police department? And they're just not equipped to handle these type of issues. I mean, think they have a hard enough time corralling some of these kids to learn. And then on top of it, there's gang violence in the schools or there's stuff going on, there's fights in the classroom and the hallway. I mean, from my own experience, when I was in St. Louis, I remember sometimes at our public school, I mean, I had, I went to a very nice middle school, a very nice public school, but there was definitely, there was definitely some fights. And I think the teachers absolutely had their hands full. And I think a lot could be done, you know, to create a better learning environment uh, for a lot of the students across the board. Now, I mean, St. Louis, I think between the city and the county has about 3 million people. Maybe it's about three, three and a half million now, but I know it's about three million between the city and the county. And I mean, could you imagine New York City, the amount of people and the limited resources that, that these teachers have? I mean, their job is to teach, not to babysit. And then on top of that, if they're having issues with violence and gangs, I mean, the authorities need to be notified. And that was something that uh, Ms. Evelyn Rodriguez talked about. Um, and unfortunately it was never addressed and her daughter, I believe her name was Kayla, had to pay for her life. And I mean, I, you know, m me watching this, these videos, um, about this round table discussion earlier, um, it just really tugged at the heartstrings, just knowing what these parents are going through and what they're having to deal with, but also how they're turning that around and helping other people and speaking out. And uh, they were talking about protesters and all these things, all these people that were protesting Donald Trump. But really, at the end of the day, what's wrong with safety? 
safety for our kids, for our communities, so that kids like these can graduate high school and go on to college and live a life. Um, the last person to speak was uh, Peter King, and he talked about this roundtable being perhaps one of the most important things that has gone on in terms of the task force that they're putting together with ICE and the Department of Homeland Security and local um, and, and local law enforcement, including Suffolk County, uh, in its history. And I mean, those are extremely, extremely strong words. Um, I don't know enough about the area, but there must be some major issues. And uh, have we seen just as we've seen just through this conversation and some of the stuff I'm talking about in regards to the roundtable discussion in Long Island today, that um, a lot needs to be addressed. And, um, you know, we just need stronger Im immigration laws. We know that the laws are poor. And unfortunately, we're having to deal with the re repercussions of, of some of these horrible laws like catch and release. So, um, you know, that's all that I have today. It's about 1130, so kind of about a 30-minute video. Uh, appreciate you guys turning in. If there's anything that you'd like me to cover or anything that interests you, please let me know. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sit down and probably look at a few things on, on QAnon coming up here and break down some things that um, are, are being put out to see if uh, – Maybe just do a little foreshadowing, look at some QAnon stuff, see what they're saying, and if down the line those things are coming true, um, which it has for the most part. But anyways, um, I think QAnon is next on the docket. So thanks again for tuning in. Um, looking forward to conversing with you all, and have a wonderful evening, and look forward to seeing you all tomorrow, uh, Thursday, May 24th. Have a great evening. Thank you.